So the first thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to get ChatGPT to write you a resume. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna engage with the chat to have it write a resume for us based off some information that we give it. And what I've got right here is a general overview of what I've done and like who I am. So what we can do is we can start out by asking, uh, to, to learn what we need to tell the chat, we can ask the chat, hey, what do I need to give you in order for you to write me a resume? So let's ask it that first. Now, the time on this, it may take a couple of seconds, but usually this outputs really quickly. If it doesn't, up in the top left-hand corner, you can hit reset thread, or you can just refresh the page, and this should refresh for you. Great, so it's giving us some information, and what we can do is we can write this out just kind of like we're a human, can talking to another human and just say, hey, in general, you know, here's what I want you to do, right? So I made a, uh, a fake uh, explanation here. So I said, hey, for my resume, my name is Micah J, and my contact information is this, my LinkedIn profile is this, and I am open to relocate. I know all these things. I have this education background uh, from a fake university that I made up. Uh, I previously worked for a bunch of places. I just made this up to kind of uh, paint a template for you. So you can follow this exact template and I will put the templates down in the resources here for your class or in the description. You can go look for that. And right here we're writing out the timeline of when we worked. We could be more specific with that down to the month. And then um, down the line, uh, you know, with all this information, we, we just go put that in there. And then... Um, it's, it's going to spit everything out, right? So it's providing this, it's building this for us now. It's got a, a nice format there with a name. Uh, it's outputting this kind of as in a, in a code format. But when we copy this over, it's this copy code, but it's not necessarily code. But yeah, it's writing this out. It's giving us a format for our skills. It's nice and clean and professional, you know, top to bottom, you know, skills, um, experience, right? It's breaking out all of the positions one by one. Uh, it's got a little summary there, you know, for it and everything. So this is a really, uh, really good, effective way to get a, a resume generated. And all we did was we just told the chat, hey, here's kind of who I am and here's what I've done and here's sort of my education background. So um, I made up this thing that Elon Musk personally recognized me with the SpaceX Employee of the Year Award in 2015. And that's just kind of like uh, just a kind of add-on type of situation to... Um, like the job, I just said like, oh, I was at this job and I got this award and then chat GPT took it and made it this like really professional sounding thing in this um, this resume, right? And at the bottom throws out education um, and, and laid it all out. So this is basically as good as any resume that I've ever seen. But one of the things that I wanted to add to this was just like an about me um, statement at the top, uh, you know, say, Hey, can you provide a general about me statement that provides a message about, you know, that I am, you know, a driven professional and I'm constantly learning and evolving and, you know, all the things that employers want to hear, right? And so I'll say, hey, make this short and professional, put it at the top of the resume, right? So I'm saying like, um, hey, just take this information and just put this at the top of that resume. So it's going to go in and it's going to consider what I've asked it to do here. And we're looking at a load time right now that might be running up against where ChatGBT at this current time when I'm using it is actually um, not super responsive yet. It's under a lot of load. These are you know the early days of its use, and um, you know so if you see the load time going for a little bit longer than you think, it might be time to refresh. Usually it'll give you an error message, but um, here we go. Cool, so I've got like an about me statement for the resume, it just spit that out. And I could even tell it something like, hey, can you make this sound smarter or more interesting? Um, some, you know, a very broad statement, just like what I would communicate to a, a human. So I'll say like, can you make it, can you make me sound more interesting and use fancier words? Okay, then it's gonna come back with whatever version it thinks, right? So I'll also just give it a thumbs up and I'll just say that was awesome, right? All right, cool, now it's actually, it's going above and beyond to give me an updated version of my resume 
with the about me section in there and it's updating the words, right? So it's got the summary for people to read that's combining my skills with the about me statement. And wow, this it says a lifelong learner with a passion for applying data-driven insights to solve complex problems and drive innovation. Wow. Like when I said fancier words, it's exactly what I meant. And this just natively knows that. So we're getting some refinement here. This is all kind of auto-generated fake information about the role that I'll have to go tweak and make it uh, tailored to you know the real things that I actually did at that job. I would not encourage you to copy and paste what the AI generated because of course, if you didn't really do it, then you're basically lying. But what you can do is you can give it a statement and say, hey, for principal data scientist at Acme Inc., can you specify that I worked on this project and really helped this department? And then you put that in there and you know, you should you should start to get, you know, a return back where it will modify this resume continually in the same chat interface where it's providing um, this information out. So overall, that is how we can write a resume out in chat GPT. That's how that works. And uh, I hope that this was helpful. I will see you in the next video. So in this video, we're going to go over how we can format automatically with chat GPT a message that we need to send out that is important. Let's say a company wide email on something that you're trying to get all of the employees of that of your company to engage with. So like one common thing would be like um, I made up this this prompt here like, hey, can you send a company wide email to all employees reminding them to update their talent and skills profile before this date? so that we can track employees for new opportunities and growth development. And I'll say, hey, this is from Micah at the HR professional development team at Acme Inc., right? So all the time you have to send out emails like this when you're in a company. So it may not be to the whole company, but you're gonna need uh, to build these emails. So this is a one way that you can accomplish this with chat GPT. Let's pass this in and the AI should, from here, go ahead and uh, format out um, you know, an email for you. So initially, like this prompt right now, it's giving um, it's giving this message back because I said, can I send? So I just need to restate um, slightly to say like, I don't want you to send it for me because it's reminding me that it can't go send an email for me, which is fine. But all I'm gonna do is, can you um, write out for me? So I'm just gonna change the phrasing a little bit. And this is just sort of the input output that you have with Jet, chat GPT based off of what it gives you. You can respond and say, yeah, hey, understood that you can't send an email for me, but can you build out the text for that? And so it's gonna go and do this now. Great, so we got a subject line, um, dear employees. It's a little bit formal, but we can actually ask like, hey, could you make it sound less formal or just like say like team comma as like the first line here? I love this, right? So um, we're asking all employees to update their talent and skills profile in our system. Um, updating your profile is easy. It even has instructions, right? Now, if I had given it a link and said like, here's where the talent profile is, it would have included that inside of here. Uh, but ultimately, right, we've automated this email. It looks really good. And all we would need to do is in that initial template that I um, pointed out right here, is you would just need to change this, tailor this to be what you want it to look like for your use case. So if you have a company-wide email about a holiday party or a picnic or um, how you know people keep leaving the, uh, the the coffee pot on when they when it's run out of coffee and it's burning in there, right? Like you can you could automate any email and you can tell it to have any tonality that you want and then it will build something awesome like this and this will be the output. So cool, I hope it was, this was helpful. Go ahead and uh, you know check out the next video. I'm gonna show you how to do some more useful things. So something that everybody has to deal with as a professional is learning new skills and adapting to new environments. So 
you may have a situation in which you need to get smart about something or you want to learn something that's new to you that you don't know but you need to know how to do it and you need like a learning plan that you can adhere to so you know like what you need to learn and where you need to go to learn it and uh, in this case like let's say you want to set out a four week plan for something new so I'm going to use this prompt right here where I'm going to say hey I need to become smarter on organizational data management and I'll ask the chat if it can provide me with a four week plan on what I can learn to get smarter in that area so that I can help my organization become more successful. Now this could be you know, any topic. Uh, I was even explicit down here. I said, hey, can you make the guide very simple or make the plan, you know, I can say guide or plan, um, plan uh, very simple so that I can understand it because I don't know that much about data. You know, I'll be like, hey, don't use too much jargon on me. So I'm gonna push this into the chat and it's gonna say, hey, sure, here's a simple four week plan. And it's gonna go through and it's gonna lay out all of the weeks for me. So it's gonna say, hey, week one, we're gonna do this and give, give some bullet points. Um, week two, it's gonna go in to say, hey, you know, here, here's what we're gonna do. Breaks it all down and gives you an, a template, right? And if you don't like that, if you think that you need to, um, you know, change, if, if you think it needs to change at all, that would just be something that we would respond to the chat and say, hey, uh, this, this guide is too complicated or can you provide a day by day breakdown of how I can get to these tasks so that that way you can like build out a schedule for each day to attack this learning plan. You can ask it to do that. And that's actually what I'm going to do next after it comes back in and outputs this. So one thing too to mention with ChatGPT is we are asking it to output a lot of text right now, and it is possible that it might stall out and and stop um, outputting text, and that's okay. We're just going to want to go back uh, into ChatGPT, refresh it, hit reset thread in the top left hand corner, and then try again, and then see if it'll give us all that chat. Um, or all that text. Let's say, can you give me a day by day schedule breakout of this learning plan? And let's see if it goes through and it says week one, day one, right? Week one, day two. That's what I'm looking for. So we'll see what it does. Cool, day one, right? Introduction to data management, day two. Data organization and storage, day three. It goes, boom. There you go, right? And it says day five quiz, and we may not have that, but what we can do is we can look for a quiz that is in an online course or something of that effect that we could um, we could actually line up, right? So um, or we can make like day 11 just a review day. Or I could tell the chat, hey, I don't actually have a quiz. Can you replace all of the days that you have quizzes logged for so that that way you'll have this um, available. But so here is a, you know, really easy, a really easy way to automate an entire like learning pathway over a really short time frame for you to be able to go and understand how to get after learning something new with chat GPT. But anyhow, we're going to move on. So go check out the next video in this course and I'll see you there. So let's say I have a problem or something I'm looking to develop a solution for at work and I know what software I think I want to use and I know what my problem is but I don't necessarily know how to tackle it using that software. What we can do is describe the problem and the software we want to use to chat GPT and see if it will give us an output. And so what I have here is a, I say, hey, I, I want to use Excel to figure out which one of my team members will be in the office during the holidays because people are taking a lot of time off. So I want to know who's going to be in and then who's going to be out on what day. And I want to use Excel. So how do I do that? And so we're going to push that problem to chat and it's going to say, hey, it looks like you want to create a schedule in Excel. And you know, then it's going to break out some steps for how we can do that. And it's nice because it says, hey, here's one way you could approach this problem. So it gives us step-by-step -step guide tells us you know how to lay out the sheet in you know cell by cell row by row by row by column um, you know and, and very specifically says hey we're gonna want to put in some leave dates 
we're gonna wanna put in some team members and then you know we're gonna wanna progress through the whole thing, right? So what we can do is we can get more prescriptive. So I could say like, hey, I wanna see a, uh, a line chart that shows me uh, the number of people that will be on in the office on any given day. Uh, so I know how much coffee to make, right? Like, let's say that that's the use case. So we'll say, can you, and once this is done, we can kind of preload our text in here to see what um, it, it's gonna do. Oh, but actually before we do that, it said for us to do uh, VLOOKUP. So actually VLOOKUP is like one of the more like intermediate challenging functions in Excel. And uh, I always have to look up the documentation to do it, but I actually just ask, uh, hey, for number six, how do we do that VLOOKUP? And so it's just gonna, I'm gonna say, hey, can you just clarify on number six because you were just a little bit too broad. So here, it's gonna go through and let's see what it, what it gives us. We'll give it our exact use case uh, when we when we line this up. Let's give it as much detail as possible, and you know try to format in an in intelligent way. But there's no specific format that you have to give this information to Chat GPT in order for it to be effective. But see here, it just said, "Here's your VLOOKUP. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna put the leave dates in their own workbook, and then you know here's the formula you're gonna want to use." So it spits that out, it goes really in depth on just that number six of the original uh, guide here, like this step right here. It broke out number six into a, an extensive guide just for number six. So like I'm saying, you know, you don't have to rely on just a broad scope overview of, hey, solve this problem for me in Excel, and then you just have to figure everything else out for yourself. No, like you can come back and you can ask specific questions and say, hey, on this specific step, I'm having this problem. How would I fix that? Let's ask you about the line chart and see what it says now. So we'll say, hey, we want a line chart on this other page. You know, what do we want to do? Great, it's gonna say, hey, from the insert tab, let's select line from the charts tab. Um, let's insert that, and then let's see here. It is a little bit vague on number five, so it'd be like, can you expand on number five in the charts explanation? And then let's see. Yeah, so now it's gonna go straight into the actual buttonology of the charts inside, uh, uh, this specific chart in Excel. So it's gonna tell you like all of the axes and like what you should call every axis and what you should do for the colors. It's pretty robust. So anyhow, this is just one example of how you could solve a problem using chat GPT, you know, and you know, create a solution or do anything like that with it. So one task that almost all professionals have is performance reports or some sort of uh, statement about the work that you've done or the, the, the work that you will be doing in your position. So I've made out a um, little template here where I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to write out like a performance work statement and I'm gonna tell it you know, who I am, what division I work for in my company and you know, I'm gonna say in the last three months I helped a customer on a project to create a new 72 foot ladder, which will be sold in all their store locations. You know, I help with research and development on a new formula for a type of honey that tastes like hot sauce. And we're halfway, halfway done with the instant cement formula project. And I'm also working on a project with Facebook ads, right? So just like a very broad, like um, thing that I'm doing at this, this company, right? So it's gonna go through and it's instantly gonna give, you know, uh, a performance work statement on 
you know, what I did over the past three months, you know, and it says, you know, overall, my contributions have been valuable and have helped drive the success of the widgets division. So we can expand on that even more in a variety of different ways. I'll be like, can you make a job description for this type of job that I work? This is so recruiting can find a placement for me in the next year. And so it's gonna take my performance work statement and then it's gonna go through and say, okay, what are the key responsibilities of this actual job, right? So it's breaking out and saying, hey, our company is seeking a driven and skilled individual to join the widgets division. Here's what you'll be doing for key responsibilities. You need to have a strong background in project management. And then I can come in here and say, oh, can you add that you need, I'll say like an education requirement, a master's in, um, in project management, or let's say um, like uh, astrophysics, because those two requirements are totally related in terms of education, so it makes a lot of sense. Um, so it should go through and be like, hey, we, um, and this is if it doesn't stall out right now, because sometimes when it blinks for a little bit too long, it may be about to stall out, we may need to refresh it. But once again, it caught right up to it, and it's just going right through here. Um, it's going through and saying what the key responsibilities are. We're getting basically what we got before, um, which is awesome, and we can take this and we can revise this to make it stronger. And let's see if it adds in the education here. Da, da, da. So it didn't actually um, put that in there. So we're gonna say, uh, like, please add um, education requirement for this job. Add. We'll say the applicant needs. A master's degree all right cool so you know I didn't catch that immediately so maybe I didn't phrase it right but you know on the second pass I'm just gonna go in and say hey um, you know the applicant needs to have a master's degree in astrophysics or like it's not gonna work out to work at Acme Inc in the widgets division so let's see if it comes through and does it now usually the more specific you are, then um, the more it's gonna emphasize it. So if I say like, hey, knock that off, like don't do that anymore, I need you to add this information to what you just told me, it will do that. So you can see it put the master's degree requirement right here at the top above everything else. And also too, oh, and then it put it at the bottom. So like the way that I worded the requirement, yeah, I think I said uh, this applicant needs Right, so that keyword needs, I think that really fired off and uh, and sort of really cued for the AI what I'm trying to get at. But anyhow, I'm gonna show you how to do some other stuff in the next video, so stay tuned for that. So a really common task that we're always doing is building out a daily schedule. So you may wanna build out a calendar or a schedule based off of projects or different tasks that you have to do through the day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to build out a hour by hour schedule for an eight hour workday where I need to accomplish the following tasks. So I can say, hey, I need to work out, meet with Joe about the Honey Hot Sauce project, finish my re performance report, deal with my travel receipts, get lunch with my boss at Olive Garden, and pick up my kids from school. So I'm gonna ask it to do that for me and see if it comes back with a coherent hour by hour schedule that gives me a breakdown of what I actually need to do. And uh, so that way I can go and take this information and add it to my calendar. So we're waiting for the chat to push this out. So it's gonna say, hey, here's a possible schedule. And it says, hey, work out in the morning, which is one really cool thing you recognize that working out is probably something you're gonna to wanna to do in the morning. Um, and then it put picking up kids from school at the end of the day, because that's when kids get out of school. So 
it even added some additional stuff for the rest of my day in there as an additional 5 to 8 p.m. spend time with your kids and help them with their homework or any other activities they have scheduled for the evening. So it's really cool because it went through my entire day and actually gave me more than what I even asked for. So uh, from here, you know, this is this is like you can go anywhere with this. So. Um, I can say, hey, can you prioritize my um, travel receipts over anything else? I'll say, can you prioritize my travel? That's the first thing I do before or after working out. And then that is going to restructure your whole daily schedule to output in that, that direction, right? Um, and I could even get really crazy and I could say, hey, can you provide me a general schedule day by day, hour by hour for these projects and let, you know see what it does there. So um, this is interesting. So it's actually saying, you know, it may not be feasible um, to, to do this because you already have this meeting so um, let's be aware. So what I can say is like, it thinks that I have this meeting with Joe at nine. So I can actually say that uh, meeting with Joe is flexible. So I'm just gonna say, hey, that meeting with Joe is flexible and just see what it says. Um, and this is just like talking to a person, right? Like if I was planning with somebody about a schedule for a day, I could say, hey, that meeting is flexible. We don't really need to worry about that. and that other person is probably going to pick that up and understand that and here it's going to give me a revised schedule where it says hey let's work out deal with your travel receipts then we'll push joe to 10 right so what we could actually do is in in this case we could have a whole day's worth of meetings and then we could provide and this is a common use case hey restructure all my daily meetings because now i need to add this one or take this one away or i need to move this one to this time and it will spit out a new structure hour by hour for your calendar so i think this is probably one of the underrated things that chat gpt can do and you know it's something that everybody uh needs to do when they're when they're working so um in the next video i'm going to show you even more that you can do with chat gpt so just check that out one thing that everybody should be doing, uh, but we all probably do pretty poorly, is a little bit of project management with all the tasks that we have to do, whether that be on like a large scale or like a smaller scale level. But like, let's say that I have a stack of projects that I need to get to and I need someone to prioritize, prioritize them for me, or let's say something is chat GPT. It's not a person, but you can talk to it like a human and it does pick up on what you're saying. So we have a bunch of tasks and I don't know which priority everything should be so can you just guess you know here's the list of tasks i want you to meet with i want to meet with bob about the company picnic i want to talk to the insurance company about the recent robbery at one of our company gas stations i need to plan out the next five years of my professional development i need to put a ticket in to get my computer fixed with it so i've got all this stuff going on but i really need someone to help me out or something to help me out to understand what priority that I should put all these tasks in. So what it's gonna do is I'm gonna give it all these tasks and say, hey, I got all this crap to do. Can you just tell me what I need to do first? Can you tell me what you think that I need to do first? And what's gonna be interesting here is based off the description of what you said about the tasks, it is uh, gonna give me a suggested priority, right? So first thing it does is says, you know, hey, number one, you're gonna to wanna to address that robbery. This sounds really like a time sensitive issue. You know, uh, then let's meet with Bob. And then, you know, we'll think about, you know, planning out the next five years of uh, professional development as a, as a uh, subset of that. And then it ranks last uh, putting in a ticket to get the computer fixed with IT. And the first time I did this is actually ranked this higher right under the insurance company because it recognized that, you know, uh, you know, that this was uh, important for me to do my job. And it was like, well, you're probably gonna need the computer to accomplish these other things. So it actually ranked this above the professional development. So um, what I can actually tell it is, I can just say like, but my computer doesn't work and that's really important. And I'm, I'm just acting like, I don't know anything here. I'm just saying, you know, I have no clue 
but I just know that I need a computer to be able to do all these things. And that's all I expressed to chat was, oh, my computer doesn't work. What should I do? How should I set up these tasks? And then it's going to go through and it's going to say, well, if your computer isn't working, you know, you should get that fixed, right? So like, let's put that as the top priority. <laughs> now I'll say, uh, can you give me a new priority list then? Which is kind of silly because I could just move the uh, order. I could just copy and paste it myself, but I can actually ask chat GPT for me to just be like the ultimate lazy human and for it to do all of this task for me. And it will, it will spit out and be like, okay, fine. Here's a revised priority list. And then it puts the ticket at the top. Um, and then it puts the robbery and then I meet with Bob and then I plan out the next five years of professional development. So if we had a longer list and we kind of told it some more background on the situation, it could give us a whole task priority list depending on the information that we provided to it. And then it can revise it and then spit that out in a, um, in a, in a format that's uh, valuable for us. So cool. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna show you even more things that you can do with chat GPT as a professional. So stay tuned for that. One thing you might want to do is just get some professional advice when you're job searching or just you're trying to branch out or whatever. And one of those places you can do that is LinkedIn. And I think a lot of people know they want to make their LinkedIn profile better, but we can ask ChatGPT how to actually do this. So I can say, hey, how can I make my profile on LinkedIn the best it could possibly be for a potential employer? Could you give me some examples on how each part of my profile should be laid out as a template or a guide? And then it will give us some, some tips on how you know each part of the profile should be laid out and we can ask it to expand on those things, right? So I could actually say, you know, hey, here is my uh, background and skills and I could just type out what my skills are and then, um, you know, I could be like, how could I format my my LinkedIn description to actually, you know, look the best it could be? Like, what could you write me a LinkedIn description? And it could do that. So that that's a that's a pretty big that's a pretty big gain, right? So it's giving us you know a one through eight list, um, and I'll be like, you know, I could say. Um, uh, name is Micah and I'm uh, data visualization professional looking for um, people to connect with on my professional journey. I don't know. It sounds like something somebody would post on LinkedIn, right? So um, can you write a... Uh, LinkedIn description and a headline for my LinkedIn. I said LinkedIn twice, but anyhow, it gets a point. It's like, okay, cool. Um, great, so it gives me a description and it's just spitting out this just beautiful, you know, text right here and then literally yeah, right in the headlines, even got the little bar, data visualization professional, helping businesses and organizations make sense of their data through effective visual communication, or my first name, like it's a little bit more of a personal option. So uh, this is great. And I could be like, could you give me a couple more suggestions? And it'll just spit that out too. So, you know, it's gonna say, Hey, here's one and you can say like, hey, well, could you give me like three options? Could you write me like a bunch of these so I can pick which one I like the best? And it could, it'll do that for you too. So he says, hey, you could use this or, um, you know, I could just say try again and it'll go through and it might write me a different one, uh, might be like the same kind of thing. Yeah, so the difference here is with over five years of experience in the field, I have a strong understanding. It's a little bit different than this one up here. So we're getting we're getting something different. Um, and instead of like professional, it said specialist. So it's tailoring the words and you know, you're, you're throwing the ball to it and it's throwing the ball back. You're asking it to modify and you're receiving something in return. So 
Uh, hope this was helpful. I have another video for you as well. If you want to check that one out, I'm going to show you how to do more useful things with chat GPT. So when applying for jobs, a lot of the time it's suggested that you add a cover letter, but cover letters are a lot of writing and it's for every single job you submit for and it's like, is it worth it? And you know, it makes people shy away from it. We can actually ask chat GPT to create a cover letter for a job ad. So I've actually got a job from uh, just a job description from a job ad for a job at Spotify. And I just said, hey, can you create a resume cover letter that explains why I want this job? Here is the job ad. And then it just goes through and it's talking about um, they're looking for a data science leader at Spotify. Spotify for artists is going to be the um, division. You're going to work with these people in these departments. In this role, you're going to report to this person and you're going to be doing all of this stuff. It has a full description who you are. You have eight years of experience, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff you would see in a normal job ad. So I just throw all of that out and it's going to instantly give me back a full bro breakdown of a cover letter that sounds just like a, you know, sounds just like a human. And if it doesn't sound the way we want it, we can just toss it back. So we can tell ChatGPT like, hey, thank you, um, you know, for what you gave us, but can you revise this to sound a little bit more exciting? That's what we'll do. Can you revise this cover letter to sound smarter and um, be more exciting about why I want this job? And we'll just see what it comes back with, right? So, he said, this thing says, I am thrilled about the opportunity to join this team, right? So that's definitely more exciting verbiage here. And, uh, you know, so we can pick if we want this one or not. But this does give us a starting point where we can take this and we can uh, modify it and we could take out some of the fluff or we could add some things. But depending on what we told it, we could tell it our past roles the same way that we did with the other video where I was talking about the resume, where I gave a little background on, you know, um, you know, like my professional past, like jobs I've worked at or whatever. And it could bring that into the cover letter to then translate into the cover letter for this specific job. So it's writing this all out for you and it's doing it instantly. So that is a huge gain for anybody who's on the job search. They could use AI to actually generate these cover letters so that every single job application is a really quick and um, like fluid, valuable experience. And there's always a cover letter, right? And you could generate cover letter after cover letter. You would just add in a different job description to make that happen. So anyhow, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. So one other thing we can do is, at, you know, try to write an email for uh, interactions with the outside vendor. So like, let's say you had somebody from Salesforce hit you up and they, they want you to sign up to, to use, um, you know, their stuff and you're ready to reach back out and you want to format an email to kind of address to them like, you know, hey, I, I think I have a rough idea of, of what we might want to use the software for. Can you give us a demo, right? And so this could actually format an email um, you know, to somebody who's actually reached out to you before. So we got this guy, this fake employee, Mark, who works at Salesforce. And, you know, so, um, you know, we got this demo email, right? So it says, hey, I'm wondering if it's possible you provide a demo of the software. So like, this is a, a really easy, you know, interaction. So if, if we just provide, you know, hey, we, we need to send an email to this guy about this software, you know, um, what can we do? We can even ask like chat GBT, can you like, can you ask some specific questions about Salesforce and what a subscription would look like? But we could just say like, can you uh, add to the email some questions about the software or mark to answer by email before the demo? Questions about, um, and it, we can literally just ask chat GPT to think up questions for us. So it can actually take what it knows about Salesforce and then actually see if it'll make some questions. And so it says, hey, you know, can you, 
you know, before the demo, can you give me some answers to these questions? You know, can this integrate with uh, Slack? Can, you know, what sort of support and training options are available? And then can you tell me what other businesses in a similar industry are using this software? So if you couldn't think of any good things to ask the outside vendor before, you know, it came up, it actually gave some, uh, some of them were like somewhat uh, generic, but like the customization. But overall, we got some very useful questions that we could ask Mark as an outside vendor, you know, hey, what can I do with this software? And chat GPT took what it knew about, about Salesforce and then um, made up some questions for you. And since chat GPT knows so many things, you know, it has such a breadth of knowledge about, you know, what things are. Like if I say, you know, what is Salesforce? It will tell me what Salesforce is. It knows a lot about it. And you could even say, you know, I am a food logistics company. Can I, how could I leverage Salesforce? So we could even ask that before we even email Mark back to just ask the AI if Mark's company or software, or whatever he's selling could even be useful for us. So that could be one thing. We could do actually like, um, you know, some market research in here as well. So I could say like, uh, I run a food logistics company would Salesforce benefit my company and we'll see what it says it says hey it could potentially it could be used for this 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 and this um, you could track orders interactions deliveries all these different things so it actually is answering for you um, what it is about Salesforce so you might be interested in a use case that that could apply here and you could say what other comparable software options besides salesforce could i use now i'll just say like hey what what else could i use this could actually arm you as you go into the demo meeting with mark to say hey how does your software compare to these other options you know and it just gave oracle hubspot zoho all these other different um, softwares and platforms as an option. So here in about four minutes, we just wrote an email to Mark. We asked him to provide some questions. We know what the competition is. We know what we could maybe use this software for. So we're actually uh, in, in, a, in rapid time with without having to go on to Google and doing a bunch of research, we're actually gonna know how to engage with this external vendor and how to move forward on this um, for our company. So anyhow, I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.